All right, we're going to get these panels out of the boxes that I just received from Amazon. These were about $160 a piece, so it's not a bad buy for 275 watt solar panels that are monocrystalline, so not too bad. Uh, they are a little bit more efficient than the polycrystalline, but those are cheaper, so it kind of depends on which way you, you go about it. All right, let's check the integrity of this thing, because sometimes you know our shipping friends ha, are a little bit uh, in a hurry, so never know what these things are going to show up like, if the frames are going to be bent or the glass, but so far looking pretty good. All right, so that one looks good. Let's move on to the next box real quick. Take a look at this panel. So far, so good. Seems to be everything intact. They give you a little instruction sheet there. Also a little thank you and review guide. So you can take a look at that if you happen to buy them. And this is the specs of the panel. And we're going to be testing that open circuit voltage, which is about 24.3 volts under ideal conditions. And upon further inspection, I did happen to find that there was a broken terminal. So we'll see if we can fix this. Uh, upon further inspection, actually, I found out I couldn't fix it. So... Basically, we'll just uh, kind of lop that thing off because we're going to be building a extension cable anyway. So I have some connectors off to the side and we'll just replace this connector while we're here. All right, so you need yourself one of these nice handy dandy crimp tools and you can buy a whole MC4 connector kit with a tool and everything online at Amazon, wherever you want to get them. They're, they're pretty popular. They'll come with all these connectors and such. So... All right, we'll take that end cap and we'll slide it down. Then you're going to take your compression sleeve and slide that down as well. Make sure you just put them on your cable as you did in order of taking it apart from your connector. And we'll grab ourselves a pin. And with a female connector, you're going to need a male pin. It's opposite. So a male connector will get a female pin. So you just got to remember that when you're putting it together. So we'll take that pin. We'll put it into our vise here. Sorry, compression tool. And we'll basically take that pin and squeeze it down onto the wire. And then you get yourself a nice good crimp. Kind of give it a little inspection, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we'll go ahead and stick on the uh, connector body and you'll fill that thing click right in. And there you go, you've basically built yourself an MC4 connector. It's not very hard at all. And when you do the other side and you do your male or female ends, it's it's basically the same. Just make sure that if you do a female body, you get a male pin. And if you do a male body, you get a female pin. And then if you don't happen to have the MC4 connector tool to tighten down that end cap to get the sleeve to crush down all the way, you can get them pretty tight just by using your hand. But I'll show you that connector tool uh, in a couple minutes later in this video. Okay, we're going to make our extension using this 10 gauge wire that is copper and it's braided. So the stuff you buy online, you never know what you're going to get. A lot of times it's not copper. It's who knows. All right, so for all my car audio guys, you might already have a clue of what I'm doing. We're going to put those two wires in the vise. Then we're going to put the other two ends into the drill. And do you have to really do this? You could probably just run some pieces of tape. This is more for just, I don't know, aesthetics, but it helps it kind of coil up a little bit. Now this cable does have a lot more memory in it than car audio cable. This this stuff likes to try to unwind on you. So when you wind up this cable, you're going to want to let it sit in this twisted position for a good minute or two. Let it build some new memory and then it'll stay into that position and you'll see here in a second. And then after we untwist the cable just a little bit, uh, you'll just want to take a little bit of tape Put it about a foot down on the exposed ends of the cable and then you can run a couple pieces of the tape along the cable as well and this will help just kind of keep the twist from uncoming done later on down the road so you can see there i'm kind of holding it in position and then i'll just undo it a few turns take it out of the drill i'll put on some tape like i did there and then basically we're going to add uh, this wire lumen that you can get at home depot uh, that's basically where I got the wire as well. You can pick all this stuff up. The cable runs about, I think, like 26 cents a foot. So this whole thing I'm building with the MC4 connectors, the wire lumen, and the 10-gauge cable is less than $40, and you're getting something that's good quality versus a lot of the stuff online. Like I said, you don't know if you're actually getting good copper wire or if you're getting actually 10-gauge wire. You might get a nice sheath, but the wire inside might actually be 12 gauge or 14 gauge. So better just go buy something good, make it yourself, I think, sometimes. 
All right, so now that you got something that looks a little bit like this, we're gonna add on the rest of our connectors just like we did in the beginning. And we'll tighten down that end cap. And over on the side here, I have a Furion connector that will be going on to my trailer. And so we're gonna take these connectors and put them together. Kind of gives you something to hold on to because they don't have two of the MC4 connector tools. So by connecting this, this kind of gives yourself a, a nice little grip. And you'll see here in a second, we'll grab the MC4 connector tool and we'll tighten down this end cap. And you're gonna spin this thing all the way down to crush down that compression sleeve till it clicks. There you go, a couple clicks. That's all you gotta do. Now we can take this panel outside and go test it. All right, so this panel is leaning up against the fence. It's, for the most part, a clear sunny day. There is a little bit of a haze outside. It's about 65 degrees, and the panel's been in the sun for about 10 minutes to get a little bit of heat soak. This will give us a little bit more of a realistic reading versus if we took it with a bone cold, it might show the actual 24.3 volts, but with a little bit of heat soak in there, we'll probably lose oh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts or so. So, And right here, we're showing 23.8 volts of the 24.3 max. So with the angle of the panel and possible haze in the sky, eh, it still comes out. That's that's where it should be for a general amount of loss. So we'll hook up our extension that we made. And this allows us to test it. And this is about a 15 foot extension. We'll see what kind of loss we get within 15 feet. About 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts, not too bad. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to get both panels. We'll wire these in series so we can double our volts and check that. So 46.8 volts of a possible 48.6. That's not too bad considering, you know, angle of the panels. Also a little bit of haze in the sky. So got a little guest here from my dog. Isn't she cute? Oh, puppy. Oh, good girl. Okay, go away. Oh, I'm just kidding, puppy. Anyway, so here is the Furion connector that I got off of Amazon. You can pick that up, obviously, anywhere. So I'm going to check the polarity on the other side of the trailer connector. Uh, I don't really know where the wires are going. I, I mean, I have a general idea, but I need these wires both to run over to my solar charge controller. That way, when I finish this project, I'm going to be taking both of these panels and turning them into a solar suitcase. And so I'll have a video out soon for that. And then also you'll see that I'm going to be hooking up the charge controller as well. And I'll put a link in the description and also somewhere here on the video. So you can see the install and also the charge controller, which was that was pretty simple as well. So other than that, that's about it for this video. I appreciate you guys uh, taking your time to watch. Give me a like or a thumbs up and we'll see you guys again soon. All right. I hope you guys liked the video. Like, subscribe. And until then, I'll see you next time.